Dave, you're receiving the Classic Contribution Award tonight for your work in preserving and maintaining and promoting the legacy of classic film music. Why is this important to you? Um, I don't know. It's just something I've always done. You and I have done a lot of work in this. It's always seemed important to me because it's such a young, relatively young art form, and I really believe it's an art form. And as an art form needs to be vetted, it needs to probably get a little bit older before people take it seriously. Um, and it's really blossomed and bloomed in the last seven to ten years, and, and it's accelerating. And I've noticed, because I've been going around conducting all over the country and in Europe, and uh, that there is a different feeling about what film music is now. You know, we know in the past it's it's kind of been looked about, looked down upon in the university and in uh, the sort of classical music concert world it's just not the case anymore people people are really actually listening to it and hearing it in its original context which i think is very important that you that the the big thing now is the live movie the whole movie with the orchestra so you're hearing it in its in its original context and what the composer actually intended not a sweet or something that's kind of watered down or you know in in, in some way um, and I think that makes a big difference. It seems that symphony orchestras are now taking this seriously why do you think there's been a change? Uh, my view on this is that there are billions of people in the world that go to the movies and have been to the movies all right that means billions of people have heard concert music so orchestras that's their bread and butter that's what they are they give concerts the billions of people that have never been to a concert, they don't know that they've actually been to a concert. So those that are lucky enough or get to come to a performance of a live movie, that's what a concert is. It's, it, and, they, and they go, they feel like, oh, this is something I know, this is something I'm familiar with. And a lot of those people, these orchestras are finding, come back to other events. Because once they feel comfortable and see the power of live music, which is the whole thing about BMI getting us money and funding things so we can all make a living doing this, is to promote and perform concert music either on film or live. And I think there's a symbiosis there that the management and the musicians and everyone are starting to see. It's good for their what they call development, meaning bringing in new audiences, bringing in younger audience. Because these people have heard symphonic music, which is what film music is, it's a different function, it's for movies, but it's, it's a bunch of guys in an orchestra sitting there playing. Now there's an audience with it, but essentially that's what it is. So I really think that's... I, to me, that's the main uh, strength of it, why it's, why it's growing. You're constantly on the road conducting this music. Where are you going to be this year and next? Oh, I'm, I've been doing a lot in New York. Um, I'm going to Berlin. I'm going to Schleswig-Holstein, which is this festival that Leonard Bernstein started, which is very similar to the, the American Youth Symphony that I work with, that you and I have worked with um, in Los Angeles. It's that age group. Uh, I'm going to be a lot in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is doing a really exciting thing this year. They're doing three movies in a week at Disney Hall. I don't think they've done that. They've probably done a movie or something. Maybe you would know better, but certainly not a, like this. This is a real commitment now to doing live movie in the city where, of course, it, it all started. So I'm really excited about that. And I'll be in London around Christmas doing E.T., which is one of my favorite ones to do. That's a wonderful uh, bridge of concert music and film music and a film, and uh, it's very classic in a way, so it, it really bridges the gap between the sort of populist notion of what film music is and real concert music. Can you talk for a second about what BMI has meant to your right. career and why it's important? To, to all of us. It's the way we all make a living. I mean, you, you make a living writing music, but we now end up owning some of that music by the grace of God or whatever. But BMI is the one that goes and lobbies Congress and, and collects money and makes sure that we're paid. It allows us to make a living. And it's very, as you're, you're hearing the press all the time, you know how hard it is to make a living as a, say, as a pop artist if you don't own your, your, your music. And BMI is for those of us that, that own or write music. And 
this is the, the way that we, the, the, a huge part of how we live, and, you know, in the lean years and the good years, you know, BMI is always a pretty consistent source of, of uh, money and all the political stuff that they do because people are always trying to stop that, you know, and we believe this is an intellectual property right, it's our right if we own it, that we should be paid for it and they make sure that that happens.